So in the previous videos, we saw an introduction to the second law of thermodynamics and we also saw how thermodynamics, uh, the second law of thermodynamics is stated in two statements, namely the Kelvin-Planck statement and the Clausius statement. Uh, the first one states that uh, a, there cannot be a heat engine that runs in a cycle and accepts heat from one reservoir and converts it into work, which means that there's got to be a reservoir in which heat, to which heat is rejected, right? And uh, the second one uh, states that uh, you cannot have a refrigerator or a heat pump that operates while transferring, uh, that operates in a cycle, transferring heat from a low temperature reservoir to a high temperature reservoir without external work being done on this, on that device or on that system, right? So uh, together, these uh, are often the most common way of stating the second law of thermodynamics, right? And uh, today in this video, we are going to look at uh, how we go further and how we uh, classify processes as reversible and irreversible. And uh, what are reversible processes and uh, what are irreversible processes and what are the causes, uh, what are some of the most common causes of irreversibilities in everyday processes that we see, right? So first we start with a concept called a reversible process. A reversible process is a process that allows the system and the surroundings to return to the original state after completing the process. So let's say the system starts at state one uh, and undergoes a process, arrives at state two, and let's say um, correspondingly the uh, surroundings or the rest of the universe undergoes a corresponding process from S1 to S2, then it should be able to, if we are able to restore the system from two to one, at the same time, restoring the surroundings and the rest of the universe from S2 to S1, then this process uh, is called a reversible process. In other words, if we are able to trace back the path that we are following, while restoring the surroundings to where it was, uh, then it's a reversible process. In reality, there is no reversible process that occur in, occurs in nature, and all processes are essentially reversible. Um, but it's useful to talk about reversible processes because, again, uh, it gives us an ideal uh, with which to compare our device or our system or our process. And so we are going to now formally write down what a reversible process is, right? So a reversible process So a reversible process is simply defined as a process that can be reversed without leaving any trace on the surroundings. So most processes can be reversed, but none of the processes or any process, if you try to reverse it, you will leave some trace on the surroundings and that's what the second law of thermodynamics tells us. So a process that can be reversed without leaving any trace on the surroundings is, um, is called a reversible process. In other words, if for example, if my system, and uh, let's uh, consider a system, right? System, um, and everything except the system is the surroundings, then uh, let's say uh, I go from state one, the system goes from state one to state two um, in some process. And meanwhile, the surroundings go from state S1 to S2, right? Uh, if I can go from state ba 2 back to state 1, so if I can take the system back from state 2 to state 1 um, along the same path that I went from 1 to 2, uh, and at the same time the surroundings go from S2 to S1, uh, then this process 1 to 2 is called a reversible process. And uh, 
as you have seen from the first two statements of the second law of thermodynamics, a reversible process is only a concept. There are no reversible processes that occur in everyday life or in nature and all processes are essentially irreversible, but um, you know, it's, it's good to study again reversible process uh, because it helps us to compare our process with a reversible process, right? And so what is an irreversible process? A re irreversible process is just a process that is not reversible. Right, and and so it's a negative definition, uh, and uh, so why does a process become irreversible? Right, so let's look at some of the uh, most common causes of what are called irreversibilities. Right, so irreversibilities Right? So, one common cause of irreversibility is friction. Right? So, why is this an irreversibility? The reason this is an irreversibility is because consider uh, that we have a surface and we have an object and there is a certain normal reaction um, between the uh, surface and the object. And so, you have to do work to move this object, right? So let us say the frictional force is Fr and you move it along a distance, uh, let us say D, then uh, the work done against friction is uh, Fr times D, right? So this is uh, W friction is uh, uh, Fr times D, right? Um, then uh, where is this work done? What is happening to this work done? What is happening is that as you know there is friction between the two surfaces and ultimately this friction is converted to thermal energy or heat and this thermal energy goes into both the bodies, the body that is being moved and the surface that is uh, stationary, right? So in other words it goes into both surfaces uh, or both objects that are moving relative to each other, right? And, and uh, so uh, let us say this object ends up here, right? And uh, if I have to restore the system to where it was, right? Uh, again, I have to do work, um, the same work. So again, uh, WF is FR uh, times D, right? Um, so I will again have to do work uh, to restore the system to where it was. But um, so at the end of this process where the object goes from here to here and then back uh, to here, the system has been restored to where it was after it let us say cools down and the frictional heat goes away, right? So the system has been restored to where it was, but the surroundings have not been. Why? Because the surroundings have done work to move it from here to here and then work back to move it from here to here back again. So which means that the surroundings or the universe is no longer at the state that it was before, although the system has been restored to the initial state. So this is the key uh, to defining a reversible process a process that can be reversed, this is the easy part, but the difficult part is that it needs to be reversed without leaving a trace on the surroundings and that is what makes it impossible, right? And this is one example of why friction causes irreversibilities and so whenever there is friction, there is irreversibility and uh, some of the work uh, is irreversibly lost that you cannot recover it and it is all lost forever, right? And, and so one example is friction, uh, the other example is unrestrained expansion. So let us say we had a spring and that it was compressed um, and so we all know that the energy that it stored uh, was uh, half k x square, where x is the displacement from the equilibrium position. And so we know that the energy stored in the spring is half k x square, whereas k is the spring constant, right? Now, 
if suppose I suddenly release the spring, right, and suddenly the restraining force is removed, the spring um, expands obviously, and the energy is lost, right, because that spring is not doing any work for me, right, it's not pushing any mass, it's not pulling a weight up, it's not, uh, you know, it's not doing any work uh, as a result of this expansion process, which means that this, uh, this energy is lost, right. Where is this lost? Ultimately, this gets converted to heat and the spring as well as the air around the spring get heated up by a very small amount, but they do get heated up, right? And so therefore, uh, this energy is lost in the form of heat. And I know that if I have to bring the spring back, then I have to do work to bring it back, right? And just by heating the air or be heating the spring will not bring uh, compression into the spring, right? So uh, to, to, you know, once I allowed the spring to expand, and then to contract it again, uh, I need uh, I need to compress it. I need to do work, and that work is again equivalent to half k x square, right? So I lost half k x square, and then I have to do half k x square again to bring the system back to where it was. So although the system can again be restored to its initial condition, uh, the surroundings cannot be, and that work e half k x square is lost forever, right? And so therefore, uh, unrestrained expansion leads to uh, irreversible. Uh, another kind of unrestrained expansion is the unrestrained expansion of a gas. So, uh, for instance, if I have a volume in which uh, there were two, um, two parts separated by some kind of a partition that can be removed uh, instantaneously if necessary. So, uh, let us say that there is a gas in here with a certain pressure and temperature and uh, let us say there is nothing here, there is vacuum here, right. To begin with, there is vacuum here. And then when this partition is removed, what is going to happen is that the gas is going to suddenly expand and fill the entire volume, right. And uh, I am going to have the gas fill the entire volume now uh, with a different pressure and temperature at the end of this process in which the gas expands without restraint in the sense that there is no opposing force, there is nothing to keep the gas from expanding and so it expands almost in instantaneously, right. And so, I will have a different pressure and temperature, right. But now I know that if I have to bring this system back to where it was, I will have to do work on this and I will have to use a piston or some kind of device to push the gas back and uh, push it back to where it was, while at the same time I will also need to remove heat from that gas as it being compressed, because we know that when a gas is being compressed, its pressure and temperature both rise. And so therefore, as I compress it, since it is becoming uh, hotter, I need to lose the heat so that I get back to the original temperature and the original pressure, right. And so therefore, uh, again, I am doing work to get the system back to where it was, but the system never did any work when it was expanding because it was expanding unrestrained. And so therefore, again, there is a permanent loss of energy uh, or permanent loss of work, useful work, and that is um, manifested again uh, because of a unrestrained expansion, right. And uh, one final example of uh, an irreversibility is uh, heat transfer through a finite temperature difference. Now, this might uh, seem like a bit odd, we are talking about heat transfer with a finite temperature difference and you might say heat transfer only happens when there is a finite temperature difference and they, it is right. But um, again, we are talking about uh, a, a process in which the delta T is finite and so there is a heat transfer occurring because of a temperature gradient, right. And uh, uh, when that happens, again we will have an irreversibility. How is that? So, let, imagine that you have an object that is at uh, uh, let us say at uh, 70 degrees Celsius to begin with, while the room temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, right. And so, if you leave this object in the room, you will know that ultimately uh, the object will cool down and that energy will be lost from the object 
and gained by the surroundings and so therefore uh, the object will cool down to a lower temperature let us say something like 25, 26 degrees Celsius right. Um, but I had to restore uh, the system to where it was which is 70 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius for the room uh, you know from the Clausius statement that that is not possible unless we use a refrigerator which requires external work right. So in order to get it back so it went to let us say 25 and 25. So in order to get it back I need a refrigerator uh, this, this process does not occur spontaneously right. I need a refrigerator or a heat pump to restore the system back to its original state which means that I need to put in external work to get the system back to its original state which means that the surroundings can never be brought back to the original state once the heat transfer has taken place. Again remember the definition of a reversible process is that I should be able to reverse it without leaving a trace on the surroundings and that is what is not possible if there are irreversibilities in the system and irreversibilities most commonly occur because of friction, because of unrestrained expansion and because of heat transfer through a finite temperature difference.